Hey ADF fans, today let's focus on landing your data in the data lake using ADF's data flows. There's a lot of different options available to you in the way that you can format that data and structure your data as you output to your data lake. Now when I talk about the data lake within Azure, that could be your files sitting in Azure Data Lake Store or in Blob Store. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be the same concept. And I'm really going to focus on CSVs for this demo just to keep the video under 15 minutes. But the same techniques would pretty much work very similarly with Parquet. And Parquet would actually be a preferred format, although most commonly we see customers today using CSV and text limited. So the demo, the demo will be with CSVs, but you should get the same concepts and the takeaways from this video to be able to apply to those other formats. Okay, so that being said, let's start here with the canvas I have on my screen, which is a data flow, the simplest possible data flow, a source and a sync. And in this case, I have a sync that is a data set, which is just a folder output. And the folder is a blob store folder. So let's go ahead and take a look at that data set. So I'm pointing to my container and a folder structure within that container. So the top level, uh, top level is container, the top level, level folder is output. And below that I have a folder with an output called demo out one. Now I'm making this folder and this folder does not have to exist when you uh, enter it into here in ADF. A data factory will create that folder for you on the fly. And I'm just going to use it for this demo for this video, so I'm not going to worry about the contents in it. So what I'm going to be able to do is on my sync within my data flow, I can say under settings, clear the folder. This way, every time we run this during these tests in this demo, we'll wipe everything clean and start from a brand new uh, slate so we can easily see the changes to the different structures of the output. Alrighty, so back to that data set. Let's finish up on that. So this is a comma delimited file and I'm saying to write the first row <clears throat> as the header. Okay, so that's going to be important if you have different formats, if you're using uh, Parquet or a different format files, a different delimiter, you just want to set those appropriately and use the right data set for that. My link service is my blob store and like I said earlier, this can be data lake store as well. The same principles will apply. Now, we go back to that sync, I have the simplest sort of data flow source in the sync. And also in the optimize, I am leaving the partition options as the default, which is use current partitioning, both on the source and on the sync. And then my source data set is also a CSV file, which is my movies data, which I use all the time for these demos. So let's take a quick look at what that data looks like. Now, the other thing I want to say for this demo is I want to show you the different ways to use the output and to structure your data in the lake. And that's going to mean that I need to execute these data flows from a pipeline. And the reason I say that is because when you're previewing data, like I have here, this is a look at my data if you haven't seen it before uh, from the, um, the sample movies data. But the reason why uh, I need to, uh, for this demo, run this from a pipeline is because in debug data preview within the designer for data flows, you're not actually writing any data. The sync is essentially not used. The sync, because the data preview is only showing you a snapshot of what is in memory. So when I go to data preview and I do a refresh here, you're just going to see the states of the data frames within Spark at this point in time. You're not going to actually write any data. To write the data, I need to go over to a pipeline. And then I need to have that data flow as an activity on my pipeline. And then I can run the debug button from here and that will actually execute the data flow and will write the data. And in fact, what I'm going to do in this demo, maybe once or twice, is also use the setting on the source within my data flow where I can use sampling. The sampling is only read at the time of execution from a pipeline. And you can do this and you can say, you know, I'm just testing right now. So when I run this from a pipeline, just give me 100 rows or 1,000 rows, whatever number you have to put in there. Okay, for now I'm going to disable this. And what I want to show you first is on all the default settings, what happens. So I have a default optimize of current partitioning for both the source and the sync. And I'm not setting under file options anything. I'm just using default. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Now, because I have to run these from a pipeline, this is going to take, uh, I believe, for uh, this data set. The data set is... Uh, the movies is about 10,000 rows in the CSV. It's 9,000 plus rows. And uh, usually to execute from end to end, it takes about a minute. So if you look at the uh, monitoring view, 
for the uh, activity, you'll be able to see what's happening inside of here. And, and what happens is it takes about 10 seconds to acquire the compute resources in debug mode. And then it will go through read the source and then it will write the sync and you have to perform the IO in addition to setting up the data frames within the job execution of the Spark job. So that takes about a minute, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more depending on the different options. Add sets clear the folder for this data flow. So Data Factory does have to go through the process of clearing out those files, which does take a little bit of time as well. So if you really want to optimize your data flows, one of the things you want to do is have maybe a separate process that clears the folder if you need to clear the folder. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for that to happen. In this case, I don't think I have a lot of files in this shouldn't take too long. Now, what's going to happen is if I go over to my Azure Explorer, you will see that uh, it will start to process the data, it will clear out the folder, and then it will start to write the files. These files are from the last run that I had, so they haven't been cleared yet. So if you go over to the data flow, you can look at the, pro the progress of your uh, pipeline from the monitoring view here within the debug view. And so this already completed, um, and uh, so a lot of the time was just spent on the IO and clearing the folder. So the total time it took was 48 seconds. So now we can see what it did was, in this case, it wrote just one single file. And this was all default, so you get the default uh, job execution ID associated with that file name that gets output. This is all created from spark.csv. Not a very user-friendly or human-friendly uh, name for that file. Let's look at the contents of that. I want to look at the contents from my, uh, I just like to do it here from portal. And we'll go into the container and we'll look at the output for the demo out one. And then just now we can click on it and we'll be able to view it. It's just easier to do it this way, I think. I feel. And so there are all the rows and all into a single file. Now if I had more data because I have the default partitioning set uh, Spark and Dataflows would have done some partitioning of those files. In this case I get one single file output. So back on my Dataflow I don't even need to do something like this over here. Output to single file is of all these options the slowest performing because if you see up here you are required to set single partition in order to use that because we have to coalesce the data from the multiple partitions into a single partition to be able to create a single file output. In this case, there wasn't enough data for Spark to have to have multiple files. So you get one single file, although it doesn't have a very friendly name. So to change that name without using the single file output, you can just do something like this. You could say, give me a pattern. So the pattern includes the ability to include in it the name of or the number of the partition or n which represents the number of partitions in this case i only have one partition so i could say movies square bracket n square bracket dot csv and now what will happen when i execute this is it will give me a file again one single file but in this case instead of having the uh, full GUID on that file name is going to have a nice file name, which is going to say movies1.csv because it is only one partition. If you have multiple multiple partitions, then the file will get that a number associated with it. And I'll show you that in a second. So because I'm running this from a pipeline to give you this output, I'm going to do a little bit of pausing, a little bit of um, speeding through of the video to make things go a little bit faster for you. Snap back on Azure Explorer. When I refresh, I see one file. Again, just one file, but it has a nice name associated with it, movies1.csv. And if you look at that file, we should see the exact same uh, contents. There you are. Now, again, if you have multiple partitions, many partitions, and you want to coalesce to a single file, then you will use the output to single file. This is a very slow performing option, uh, allowing Spark to maintain the partitions and giving it a name per partition is a faster way to go. The way this would look, let me show you how to how to create, how to force Spark to use partitioning that is defined by you. In this case, we're using partitioning under optimize as current partitioning or essentially default. Now I'm going to apply some control to it. Now this is one of those options that you should only do if you essentially know your data well or have a little bit of insights into how you want Spark to behave. What I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to actually hash the, uh, to create partitions. I'm going to hash on movie, which is a unique ID within my data, although I do have some duplicates because I have some data quality 
uh, Easter eggs hidden in there. But that's fine. I'm going to say that I know I have about 10,000 rows, so I think splitting it by five partitions is going to be good enough for this demo. So I'm going to say give me five partitions by hashing on the uh, movie column. <clears throat> you can have multiple columns in here, by the way. It doesn't have to be a single column. Now what's going to happen is when I'm on the sync, I'm going to leave this exactly as it is. I'm going to say maintain that partitioning scheme. And the settings will just be the pattern of the movies with the partition number on it. So all I have to do is just change the source, okay? Everything else can stay the same. Now when I go to execute this this time, what's going to happen is first it's going to clear the folder, and then you're going to get a movies 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. One for each partition. They're each going to have the number of rows that split across those five partitions, and the partition will be based upon the hashing of the movies column. And so now as I hit refresh back here on my portal, I see movies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you'll just see a subset of the rows that were hashed across those different partitions falling into your file. Okay, so that's great. Let's do something else now. Let's take a look at um, maybe we want to, instead of just having these movies 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we want to have a little bit more control to the data and as it lands in the different folders. Let's say, for example, we want to take the data that is... Um, this movie data and we want to organize it by year let's have a file for each year but the rows and the movies within each of those uh, year files needs to be sorted by the movie id so how would you do something like that we're going to start on the source and we're going to set the partitioning there and because I, I know that I have a key which is going to be year that I'm going to ch um, that I want to organize by I'm going to use year as my key column. Now the difference between source and sync key partitioning is that on the sync side this will tell Spark to create uh, partitioned folders using key value pairs. So I don't want that, I just want to organize the data so I'm going to use this on the source. Now this is going to result in a uh, partition per year. Now to sort that data within those partitions you need to add a sort transformation. And I'm going to say sort by movie and sort within each of those partitions. Leave now the partitioning as the current because we we're going to maintain that partitioning throughout. The same thing on the sync, use current partition. And let's create a file name for each of those years. So to create a file name, what you want to do is create a derived column for that. And so I'm going to have a, it's called file name. And I'm going to set that file name using string interpolation, which is double quotes within data factories data flow expression language and I'm going to say the uh, folder I want to put this file when using as data in column data factory defaults back to the container set within your data set so you want to set the folder path here within your drive columns so I'm going to say output slash demo out one which is the same thing that we have in the data sets and then this is where I'm going to create the file name so I'm going to say movies dash and I'm going to use a dynamic field here I'm going to use the year just like so dot CSV so this will create a file with this entire uh, folder path and name for each file so save and finish and then on the sync I'm going to say as data in column using the file name column all right let's run this and what we should get now is the partitioning per year from the source and then we will get a file name for each of the data in that data set sorted by movie within each of those partitions. So now as I refresh the folder from my portal, you'll see the years start to uh, get created in the outputs. So what Data Factory is doing from the settings is creating key partitioning based on the year and then is sorting the data within each of those partitions. Now I do want to state how much longer this is taking because we are creating the derived column for the file name and more so because we are sorting the data within each partition so it takes that those those options take a lot longer so just allowing the data to be partitioned by spark natively is a much faster option for you but this is something if you have to do things this way this is a way to organize the data in this manner so if i look at for example i pick the movies from uh, let's, see, let's pick movies from 1940 we have the movies only from 1940 from the key partitioning and then the sorting sorted those in order of movie ID and then the naming of each of the files is coming through the sync setting of column name which was a derived from a derived column.